Hello, this is Isaac Lundgren. I've decided to make this video for Adventure Game Studio users, AGS, which is a fantastic uh, program, by the way, who have been curious about the plugin for the Unity game engine, Adventure Creator. Now, um, I did a lot of work with Adventure Game Studio um, on my game, and I decided to experiment with Adventure Creator this year, and I have decided to make the switch. And uh, whether you do or not, that will be totally up to you and whether it works for your workflow and for your game design needs. But I'm going to give the uh, top 10 reasons as to why I decided to make the switch to the Unity game engine this year. Okay, number one, the nav mesh. In Adventure Game Studio, AGS, you have your walkable areas that you can define. In Adventure Creator, that's replaced with nav mesh. Now, I think it's a much more intuitive way uh, to set it up. You start with the polygon, you can edit the uh, points, and easily define where your character can walk. You don't have to fill in anywhere, you don't have to pixel hunt and make sure you got everything. And this is uh, exactly where your character will be able to walk. So we can check that out here. They also have um, scaling capabilities. She gets smaller as she goes further back. That is uh, true also with AGS. The way that that's achieved in Adventure Creator is done with the sorting map. So this is the sorting map here. It uh, defines the scale. It defines what layer your character is on. So for example, this tree is uh, on layer 5. This tree is on layer 10. So in between here and here, on my sorting map, there will be a number that is in between 5 and 10. So that she's in front of this tree and behind this tree when she walks. When she goes behind this tree, I choose a number that is uh, less than 5. So that she'll go behind in the layer ordering. So that's another thing that's different is you have your art assets, anything that y you need to have walked behind, you'll have that separately rather than an entire painting uh, that is um, solid. You'll bring these graphics in separately and it works out very nice. The other thing I want, to, or number two, is the player starts and marker 2Ds. So these little arrows that you see on the ground, these are predefined places that I have my character uh, walk to and walk from uh, throughout the game. And I can call upon these markers uh, very easy with drag and drop. So for example, when I am doing the on start action script and I want my character, if she came from the previous scene five, then we will have her walk to this marker here and you can change that marker as easily as dragging it right in to this section here. And if you change your mind at some point and want to move the marker, your character will automatically um, move to that marker including the direction that they face. So right now, if I start the game, my character starts here, she's facing upright. I can move that marker here and I can rotate it. So now I'll have her facing downright. And it's as easy as that. I didn't have to define coordinates or find those exact X and Y coordinates. I can just drag the marker. The code automatically uh, knows that I moved the marker and it still refers to that marker and it's moved as easy as that. Next, camera controls. I absolutely love the camera controls. We've got a default camera that you can use for your game that you can set up. You can change the size of the camera. Notice down here I'm getting a preview as to what that looks like. You can set the camera to follow your character. Uh, you can have the camera scroll or you can just keep it solid. Uh, whatever works better for your particular scene. Excellent camera controls uh, in Adventure Creator. So notice I have the camera 
following my character and it's nice and smooth and fluid and you can uh, control that tracking speed as well so you've got all of those controls in here next <clears throat> scalable art assets one thing that was frustrating for me as an artist working in adventure game studio is that any art assets you brought in, like objects and things you wanted your character to interact with, they had to be an exact size, whatever was in relation to your game. Well, in Adventure Creator, art assets are all independent of uh, the screen resolution for the, for the scene. So I can click on an art asset I bring in, I can change it, I can move it, well you already know we can move it but I can scale it if I don't like the size or if I want to see a different part of the tree. It is all changeable just like that. And it'll be updated in the game. Now keep in mind, it will mess with your uh, walkable areas and whatnot. That's kind of a given. Uh, speaking of which, you can create what's called a hole in your nav mesh. Very easy and you just drag in the hole that you create to the area where it says hole. You can tell it how many holes you want. You can say, I need three holes for this scene. And you've got three holes that you just drag uh, what you need into those holes. And we'll change that back to the way it was. Okay, next. The naming, naming conventions for animations are uh, fantastic. So when you're defining, let's see, Callahan Curse, animation characters. When you're getting your animation set up, and rather than having to uh, link every specific animation uh, every single time for every single character that you have in every single direction, you can just give it the name of walk underscore D for down, walk underscore DL for down left, walk underscore DR for down right, walk underscore L for left, and it automatically assigns those um, animations uh, to the correct direction when your character is navigating. So here's a list here. Let's check out the down left and preview it. Okay right and preview it you can also uh, change your speed right here with the frame rates uh, excellent an animation implementation and the naming conventions next another thing that I find most useful and uh, a big seller for me is being able to edit an, an a graphic asset right in your game and to save it back and have it automatically update in your game. For example, so I'm clicking on this foreground tree. I can uh, double click in its sprite. It opens it right up into my graphics application. I can make changes. I'm just gonna grab my graphics tablet here. Okay, so I can make a change to a graphic asset. I can save it here. Oops, e extra layer, I'm gonna flatten that. Or merge them anyway. Okay, I'm gonna save it here. Come back in Unity and my change is automatically in here, ready to go into the game. I can leave that object item open. I can edit undo and reverse my change. I can save it again. 
come back into unity back to the way it was. I love that feature. I can easily edit a background or an asset and have it ready and see exactly how it is functioning right in the game. Uh, next. You can experiment with uh, game settings while you're in game preview mode. So we're previewing the game scene here. Let's say you want to um, experiment with the camera. You can come up here to the camera, navcam1, and let's say we want to experiment with the zoom. So let's zoom in a little more. Oh, that's zooming out. Okay, we're gonna come in a little closer, maybe 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2 and let's just see how that looks. So if you decide you want it a little closer in here, you can experiment right in the game. You don't have to leave your preview uh, to run a test. Okay, so when you exit, your changes will be uh, released. So the changes won't stick when you exit, but you can either copy it here or copy component here. And then you have the option to paste those component values within here. And next. Okay, now this is probably one of my absolute favorite sellers for switching, but as you noticed, <clears throat> there is full support for parallax scrolling and it looks fantastic. So let me just walk around in a few scenes here. You can implement parallax scrolling into your game, which adds a ton in my view. And I know AGS does have a parallax uh, scrolling function, but it's not native. And I'm always uh, leery about trying things that aren't uh, native to software because, you know, there's opportunity for glitches and things like that. Okay, so I'm exiting here. Take a look at one more parallax scrolling scene down here. Okay. Just love the, uh, the fluid camera movements and the parallax scrolling. So one more thing, speaking of cameras, you can also change the camera within the game. So if you have an interaction, uh, for an area, you can click and have a camera movement programmed in, uh, switching between switching between cameras right during your gameplay. So there's a lot of uh, things you can do with camera movement and parallax scrolling and all of that. Okay, and the very last thing that I want to share, this is probably the most important reason, and that is when you go to build and run your game, you have a variety of platforms to export to. Here you go. You scroll right through them. No longer is it just uh, Windows PC uh, and sometime later sort of making a Mac version. You've got code that's native for a variety of modern platforms and interfaces. So these are my top 10 reasons as to why, for me, making the switch to Adventure Creator was worthwhile. Uh, I hope you found this video valuable. If you did, let me know in the comments. And happy game design!